Okay, so how do I know there's next speaker? Well, it's a little bit creepy, but he started stalking me about two years ago on the internet. Um, I guess this is the effect of stalking me on the internet. Yeah, yeah, you get to you get to speak in the village eventually. Now, Matthias, uh, he's from Sweden and he works for a, a global company and also does um, his own freelance security consulting. He's a social engineering enthusiast and he has a pretty interesting topic today about scam calls. So if you would join me in welcoming Matthias Borg. Thank you, Chris. Oh, geez. Um, My name is Matthias Borg and I'm, uh, I'm from Sweden. So is anyone else here outside the States? So we're from uh, Europe or? Uh, all right, awesome. So my topic here is scam calls. Everyone is aware of them. Hi, I'm calling from Microsoft, you have a virus and so on. And uh, we've seen them a lot for the past Number of years. Uh, yeah, but there. Um, I actually added um, some URLs for you to download PCAP files, and I will get back to them later. Uh, and I can also bring back this picture. I realized that it should have been in the end of the presentation. But during my journey here, this is my first time at DEF CON. Uh, yeah, thanks. And um, I have my manager in, uh, in New York. And when I got the speaker acceptance from Chris this summer, I, um, I thought, well, maybe I can get the company f to pay for it by visiting my manager. And uh, so I asked this uh, traveling book system to, uh, to arrange all the flights and the hotels and so on. And I said, well, we found this very cheap hotel in, in New York, uh, very low standard. And I thought, well, that, that's all right, I'm just going to sleep in it. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, this is all right. Uh, at least I have the toilet. So I turn around and, yeah, nothing there. Uh, I also went out on the streets during the night. Just, I mean, it was my second time in the States. And I went to uh, Times Square, and this rap artist came up to me. Oh, wow, I'm, I'm this rap artist. I'm selling my CD. And I was, oh, this is a bit fishy. So, um, all right. Uh, yeah, you need to buy this. And I was thinking, uh, well, I'm a social engineer. I'd never fall for that. So, uh, we actually have these ones <laughs> that, that I will throw up for like comments or questions or something like that. They were very expensive. <laughs> So, we started to receive a lot of calls. I mean, in a huge company, we have the uh, number in, like, number range. If one receives it, the, I mean, they add from 01 to 02 to 03 and keep calling people. Uh, I never received that call. I was a bit disappointed. So, when I finally received the call, I was all shaky, basically like I'm, I am right now. Uh, and um, I didn't know what to do and I said, well, I'm not at my desk. Can you call me back within an hour? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I will. I'll, I will definitely help you with your, with your computer. And um, yeah, this is very serious. I thought, well, that's proactive. And I mean, all of us should be proactive. I mean, offering that kind of service, helping anyone with infection, that's, that's amazing. And um, he also mentioned, well, I'm calling from Microsoft. I'm, uh, I'm in their, their headquarters in London. Um, with a call ID, the, uh, explained that he actually called from Sri Lanka. Uh, all right, I, uh, that might be true. Um, so I was thinking, oh, well, that will give me some time to set up a virtual machine and do some smart things. At least I thought at the time. And he was like, oh, I really got this guy. Something like this. Horrible. <laughs> Poor creature. <laughs> How did that really happen? <laughs> so 
Sorry, Chris, I added that late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, we were waiting at this, uh, we had a coffee break, wait, I prepared everything. Uh, I actually installed uh, a new virtual machine, I uh, installed Wireshark, I installed, well, added process monitor, and thought, oh, well, maybe they will see that Wireshark is running, so I actually renamed the executable, which doesn't take any effect at all. And uh, that's one of the things that I realized, oh, that's something you don't have to do. Um, but after a while the phone was ringing and we were, yay! Now, we, now we're about to frame this guy. And, um, oh. So he started to tell me the commands I was about to run and it was, press Windows and R, yeah, all right. Type W as in Washington, all right? W as in Washington, right? W, all right, <laughs> come on. S as in Sweden. So uh, I just started to wait and see. Uh, after half the support, I realized, all right, it's support, and then I was just waiting. Don't have me. All right, so I was redirected to this uh, log in session. And this is interesting because Microsoft is actually using this uh, for the support calls. Uh, one of my colleagues was actually, was actually waiting for a support call at, um, at the time. And um, when he finally called, they said, he said, I'm not falling for this, and he hanged up the phone. <laughs> and then he had to create an, an extra support ticket. Um, after a while, this uh, screen popped up, like, oh, um, we need some permissions and, and so on. And I said, well, he's about to help me with my virus problem. And yeah, I go for that. Um, and this guy, Jan Erik Hag, is about to help me. All right, yeah, a Swedish name at least. Um, the first thing he did was opening uh, the web browser and went to TeamViewer because he happened to need two different remote tools. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, I'll go for that. And he asked me to, can you bring a piece of paper and a pen? Yeah, yeah, sure, what do you want me to write? Yeah, just start typing, just some random bullshit, basically. Uh, just to keep my eyes away from the monitor. All right, I can do it, I can look at the uh, screen recording later, doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> So what he did was <laughs> adding a stupid password. <laughs> um, and, um, and he also asked me to write down the customer, I need to look in, uh, customer license uh, security ID number. It's good that there's no piracy because that would be illegal. Um, CLS ID, I thought it meant something else, but uh, yeah, that's a new thing. And he also showed me some proof that I was infected. Because <laughs> there are no errors in, in, the, in the event view, never. You've never seen it. And especially if it's a new, very quickly installed virtual machine, and you started to make some quick changes that you thought would help. Um, that's usually how my event view looks. But all right. And I mean, you should have noticed that there's something going on with this machine because there are no logs back like one hour back and it's totally empty. <laughs> and this is the service hacking. He, he actually told me that. Oh, this is the hackers. They, they've been hacking your services. All right. And he, I mean, he was talking about that for a long time. Uh, after a while, he, he moved on and opened 
command prompt. I thought all the hardcore Windows guy was using PowerShell at this time. And I noticed dur during this that it says the uh, association for PCAP files is Wireshark, and I was, oh well, ho <laughs> hopefully it won't notice, and well, he didn't. <laughs> and I mean, he was clearly, uh, he mentioned the word cyber a lot. He was a cyber master hacky security professional. <laughs> yeah. Who wouldn't it be that? And the, I'll, I'll go to the next screen, but uh, this is how it looked in the command prompt. I mean, everything is red. That must be very bad because it's impossible to just uh, change the, uh, the text uh, color and text size and so on. And this is what it said. The computer is affected because the warranty is not active. Windows firewall licensing certificates are not valid. System is hacked to 98.5%. <laughs> Where are the other one and a half percent? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's just amazing. <laughs> so in order to active the warranty and to valid the Windows firewall licensing certificates, register Microsoft Corporation and, ma and make the computer and internet connection secure, because we know that things can be secure. This is a new bus buzzword. Have you heard about cyber certificates? Um, he actually m told me that your cyber ce certificates has been hacked. <laughs> I was a bit confused at that time. <laughs> um, what he did at this time, he, he wanted to get some money for the service and uh, I mean <laughs> I got this once. <laughs> um, so what it did was connect into another hacked machine. Um, and um, open the web browser and uh, I, I could see this. It was a, just a team viewer session running from my machine. And um, and he opened this uh, form and gave me access to the keyboard and the mouse. So I was, oh, oh, now I have the chance to like take this guy. I didn't thought that, oh, this is another hacked computer. Uh, so what I did was just uh, slamming the Windows key just to get, it was Windows 10 box. Um, and I happened to see this Xbox Live account. And that username was a, it was easy to find it. And um, in Sweden, it's very easy to find people. Ridiculous easy. I mean, our social security numbers is available on the internet. That's a totally different story. But um, <laughs> so I actually, w I was able to track this uh, Swedish citizen down and got his phone number and. I tried to give him a phone call and um, he, um, he answered the phone and I realized, all oh, right, this is not the same guy. Um, and um, he, he really wondered what, why I was calling him. And uh, I said, well, uh, have you had a virus? <laughs> and he was, yeah, yeah, some, someone called me about it. Right. Um, I will help you with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wasn't that mean, but uh, I explained to him, well, you, you've been, um, uh, these guys, they, they scammed you, and I mean, you probably should contact your bank and, and, and so on. Um, but it, the guy that was talking to me had, um, previously, um, when I thought that, well, this might be the time for me to introduce myself. Um, I'm not that very high technical. I know some things, but um, I mean, you guys are like very hardcore at everything. I've seen some sessions and it's, it's just amazing. And um, he, he told me that, uh, he realized that I was uh, playing around with him and he told me that 
he would make love to my whole family. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's kind of cute, actually. I mean, I'm a geek. Uh, so I had to ask him, does that include me? What? Why do you ask? Well, I'm a geek and never get laid. <laughs> uh, he hung up the phone and I realized, well, um, this guy actually failed at this call, but it's, it's very easy for them to actually be successful in these attacks. And I guess at the time we had about 100,000 citizens of Sweden getting these phone calls. Um, and I know about one guy that actually fought for this. And he, um, uh, he was accepting everything they wanted to do. And he lost his bank account information, so they were able to log on. And, um, but the problem is that they used his account to uh, launder some money. And so they transferred, I guess, the, in, in dollar it would be uh, five grand to his account, and the bank stopped the access to that account. And um, the problem is that they couldn't access their money. They actually lost five grand. <laughs> they weren't that happy about it, so they actually called him again and threatened him, and that's, that's sort of a sad story. Um, but um, sometimes it can go wrong for, for the scammer as well, and I've seen other guys doing similar things, like try to record what they're doing and so on, and my idea with this talk is to have, have a discussion and see how we can make this better for the next time so everyone is aware of what they should do when they receive the call. Uh, maybe we publish everything using hashtag or something so we can collect all the things and improve, improve this framing even further. I'm not sure how we would do it. And, I mean, if you have any ideas, I have some CDs for you. Mr. Manhattan, DJ, dish soap. Yeah. <laughs> they sign as well. Might be worth some money. So what's the next step in phoning the scam callers? Do you have any, any ideas, any thoughts? Come on, you've been laughing all the time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, from LogMeIn and TeamViewer. Uh, I reported everything to uh, TeamViewer and LogMeIn. And they said, oh, this is probably a scam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think that's worth the CD. I mean, the first question. Come on. And I'm not sure if it's actually on the track on it, so be careful. I don't own a CD player. <laughs> Give it someone else. Uh, the PCAP file is available, um, and I will share the URL, URL later. And uh, hopefully, if someone is very good at reading PCAP files, I'm not, um, you can get something out of it. Um, I also have the process monitor log available. And it's sort of interesting. You can see when they're dropping the files and so on. Um, so what, how do we protect the end user from, or normal citizens to, uh, so they don't fall for this kind of scam? Um, security awareness training is, is necessary, as everyone in, in this village has been explaining in all the talks. Uh, you will not be more secure than the common sense. I mean, there's no appliance box to protect against social engineering, even if people think that appliance boxes can help them with most of the things. And we need to sort of patch the human being to human 2.0 to increase the common sense. That's the end of the slides I had. Um, I guess we have, where's the time thing? We have some, still have some time. Uh, 
I could go into the uh, identity security in Sweden. Uh, that's uh, that's hilarious. Um, but any questions? Thank you.